one of the better running backs in the country is about to hit the transfer portal. Yeah, Miami should definitely kick the tires on this one. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We told you the April transfer portal is going to be crazy, and it's not even open yet. And we're talking about players who are going to be entering, obviously, Miami losing Nigel e. Kelly, but they could potentially gain a running back here. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and also host of Locked on ACC. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. To the everydayers, we love you. We are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We will be talking today about expectations for Miami's spring game coming up this Saturday, April thirteenth. But first, we've been mentioning guys for the last, well, really for the last few weeks, ever since Henry Parrish announced he was going to hit the transfer portal and leave Miami, that the Hurricanes are going to be aggressive to go all in for a featured back type player in the transfer portal. Now, I absolutely believe in Mark Fletcher. I'm just not 100% certain that he's not going to miss any time this season, and it can't hurt to have a couple of guys who can carry that kind of load. So Miami needs to pursue Oregon State running back Damian Martinez. It was reported last night Martinez intends to answer uh, to enter the transfer portal, which opens on April 15th. Six foot tall, 230 pounds. This is a powerful running back. For what it's worth, I'm told Martinez has already followed Cam Ward on Instagram. People always track that social media stuff. Now, I have to wonder if Martinez might end up being the best running back who enters the portal in this spring window. We'll have a clearer picture of that in five days, of course. Uh, he averages, Damian Martinez, 6.1 yards per carry. Last season at Oregon State, he rushed for 1,185 yards, nine rushing touchdowns. He's rushed for over... 2,000 yards in two seasons at Oregon State, average 6.1 yards per carry in both of those. So we'll talk about the pros and cons here, although my cons list is, is pretty slim on any potential reasons why Miami shouldn't go after this player. So let me introduce our awesome guest for today. I've been privileged to go on this man's show before. He does an awesome job at 305 Sports now. You see his content on Instagram, on X, on YouTube, of course. William Padron is with us. Will, thank you for stopping by, sir. How are you? Good. Thanks. Thank you, Alex, for having me on. It's a pleasure being on your show. Well, okay, so give me your take on Damian Martinez, because I know a, a lot of Miami fans will say, well, hold on. Like, you know, we, we've got Chris Johnson, who's been playing well in practice. We, we've got Elijah Lofton, who's a tight end, but he's actually looking really good getting carries at running back in the spring, and, and Fletcher's going to be back at some point, hopefully in time for the regular season. A.J. Allen is definitely going to be back in time for the regular season. You've got the Trevante Citizen X Factor. Jordan Lyle hasn't even arrived on campus yet. Chris Wheatley Humphrey. Uh, do, do you feel like the running back, especially if you can get a guy like Martinez, who's a proven starter these last couple of years, is the juice worth the squeeze on this one? Oh, absolutely. I think he's. I think it's worth pursuing, especially since uh, Mario Cristobal's first year. It seemed like running backs were going down by the by the minute. So that's a position that gets a lot of hits. That's a position that that gets you know has to go between the tackles and so on, and faces some of the toughest guys you know on the opposing defenses. So injuries are going to happen. No one expected Mark Fletcher to have the injury that he had after uh, during the bowl game that's been lingering and might linger into the season. So having basically having a, a strong running back room with very good running backs, it, it can only make your 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 team better. And Danny Martinez is just is not a jag. He's not just a guy. Okay, he is an absolute stud and he ran over some of the some of the best teams in the Pac-12 and he's a big kid six feet 232 pounds over six yards per carry he ran over Washington you know which was a national championship right. game this year he ran over I think Mish Powell right as well who's our who's our uh, one of our top safeties uh coming in from the transfer portal as well he's deceptively quick because he's known for his power but he could change direction on you at any time he has great vision on the field. He, if he sees a hole, he, he'll be able to take it and run with it. He's elusive enough that he'll be able to break tackles. You can't go one-on-one -on -one with him. And don't even dare 
Day or go high on him. He will run you over. Arm tackles are not to be done. Gang, ta gang tackling is necessary, or you better have very good leverage when you go low on him to make that tackle because he will run you over. He's only going to make the running back room better. He's only going to make Cam Ward's job easier because he's going to bring those safeties in because he, because you have to account for him, which is going to make guys like Jacoby George and Riley Williams and Zay Horton just, uh, just, just feast because the fact that you have to really account for Miami's running game because the fact that they're just loaded. And on top of that, we did lose, we didn't just lose guys in the transfer portal. Henry Parrish was a very good running back, and Don Cheney Jr. will be missed, okay? Which yes. he went over to Louisville. So I think bringing in Damian Martinez is, is a good job, is a good ploy by Mario Cristobal just for depth and also to make the running back room just better. I like what you said about Martinez being deceptively quick. Um, he is not short on explosive plays. I was reading this stat via Pro Football Focus. It was posted on Inside the U. Um he had 17 rushing attempts that went for at least 15 yards last year. That Those, those are explosive yeah. plays. Uh, they write Henry Parrish led Miami with 10 carries that went for at least 15 yards last year. Uh, whereas Martinez last year had 17 of those. He obviously he did get more work because Martinez was really the focal point of the Oregon state offense. I know that Florida state fans would like to tell you it was all, it was all DJ. We young but uh, I think Damian Martinez had a lot to do with making that offense go last year, but 17 runs of at least 15 yards. The last time a Miami running back did that was Mark Walton back in 2016. Uh, also, Misses tap forces, missed tackles at a high rate, generated 57 missed tackles last year. Now, in terms of, uh, I guess, to play devil's advocate, Will, because I know some Miami fans will again say, like, why, why do we, are, are we sure we need this guy? We've got a lot of running backs. You know, I guess a potential con would be if you think bringing in a more experienced guy like this, if you're worried that he's going to take carries away from young guys that need to develop. I get it like that. I'm not going to say it's an invalid concern, but I believe that concern gets trumped by your want to need to, to win now and to maximize one year with Cam Ward. Like you've got one year with a Lamborghini at quarterback. Why not surround him with the best possible weapons? I, I guess a, another potential con that people will bring up will, and uh, it's not my money and it's not your money, but Martinez is likely to, to command a pretty hefty NIL sum. Um, now there's no salary cap, so it's not like you know you're uh, you're, you're taking up a percentage of what you need to pay out. But it's been reported that Martinez was set to make uh, about four hundred thousand dollars in NIL at Oregon State this coming season. I'm sure wherever he ends up, he's going to look to command a sum higher than that. But this goes back to me again: one year of Cam Ward, surround Ward with the best offensive weapons possible. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, and listen, running back, even the NFL is doing this. You really, you rarely have an RB1 that takes up a lot of carries. He actually had 194 carries uh, this past season. So he, he took up a lot of the bulk of the carries for the Beavers over at Oregon State. But to tell you the truth, in most colleges and, and in the pros, it's running back by committee. You have more one, two, even three running backs that are taking up, you know, they're taking up carries. There's no more of the Emmett Smiths or the Barry Sanders or the Ricky Williams that they were a focal point of the offense of running back right now. Although very important in an offense, they they they're they're no longer having that guy. Very few teams have that, or very few teams do that these days. So Martinez coming in and taking carries from the young guys. Um, I understand that perspective, and and in some cases it, it could be true as far as, as the development goes, but they're still young. They're still developing. Chris Johnson is still developing. When Jordan Law gets here, he'll be developing. Uh, Damien's kind of an established guy. He could be that bridge gap for all those other younger guys to come in as well. Plus, you have Cam Ward. This is a one year that if you want to win, you can. You really need to take the bull by the horns and try to win and do whatever it takes to win. If Damian Martinez gets you there with a dynamic quarterback, a dynamic running back, and the receiving core that we have as well, I say go for it. Why not? OK, why not? Listen, you can get mad all you want. We're in the offseason. But if we're thumping, if we're thumping Florida and we're thumping Florida State and he goes for 135 on nearly on five yards to carry, no one's complaining during the regular season. I just don't see it that way. Yeah, as far as, um, you know, re reasons why he may not end up being a cane, a couple of those I can think of. And again, I think I think this is someone that I, I believe Miami will pursue him. How aggressively they pursue him is yet to be seen. And that might be dependent on who else enters the portal in in five days. Will I mean, the transfer portal opens up April 15th. 
You, you have certain players that are already declaring their intentions, like Nigel Lee Kelly at Miami is going to be going out the door. You add Damian Martinez to that list, so you can start kind of putting these guys on your big board. But, um, you know, I don't think there's going to be too many guys who hit the portal who are better than Damian Martinez. This is one of the better running backs and more productive running backs in the country last year. But uh, I do think Miami, if they are really serious about you know, bringing in a featured guy at the position that they, they may wait a couple days to see who else becomes available. Uh, the other part of it is, uh, obviously, even if Miami wants him, there's no guarantee they get him. Um, I think a team to watch out for uh, could be Michigan State because uh, his former head coach in uh, in Oregon State, Jonathan Smith, left uh, Oregon State to go to East Lansing, and some of those Oregon State players have already transferred over there. So you have to wonder how how strong is that bond and that connection? Could he end up, you know, jumping over to the Michigan State Spartans? So that, and and obviously for a player this good, he's going to be wanted by a lot of teams around the country. But folks, uh, I think Miami should pursue this guy at least kick the tires. And we have a lot more to talk about on this episode of Locked On Canes. We got our guy Will from 305 Sports now with us. We're a few days away from Miami spring football game. Which position groups, which players uh, are we really looking forward to seeing and who needs to step up this weekend? I also want to have a conversation a little bit later on, uh, as we did with the truth teller yesterday, about uh, how much pressure is on Mario Cristobal heading into this coming season, how many games Miami needs to win. So you know what you want to do? You want to keep it locked right here. We are only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And you know I'm only getting started with FanDuel because I'm winning money. I'm having a blast with this. It's playoff time just about in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing as well, my friends. There's so much action at FanDuel. It is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. You know I'm looking at those ACC win totals. Miami, Florida State, Clemson, over under 9.5. Uh, eight and a half over under for teams like Louisville and NC State, who I think are going to be really good. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of Locked On and America's number one sportsbook. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. By the way, everydayers, you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level? Sign up to become a Locked on Canes insider. Click that link in the show description below. When you become an insider, you get text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa. One-on-one -on -one questions and answers, breaking news, recruiting scoops, practice updates. We'll be all over it for the spring game this coming weekend. Try it free for 14 days. Click that link. Become a Locked On Canes Insider. Try it free. And then after 14 days, if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We add a lot of value there for the Locked On Canes Insiders. We got Will Padron with us here from 305 Sports Now. Uh, so, Will, a lot of players have been talked about heavily during spring. Uh, it, it's okay to bring up Cam Ward. If that's the guy you want to watch, I totally understand. But maybe go a little bit deeper than that. Who are you looking forward to watching this Saturday? And from the very beginning, I wanted to see in the spring game, Elijah Lofton. Okay, Elijah Lofton, the talented tight end out of Bishop Gorman. Big fan of what I'm seeing. I liked what I saw in his huddle videos uh, a few months ago when he committed. I like the fact that he is a Swiss Army knife, like you've called him, you know, on your show several times. Uh, the fact that he's making these dynamic catches. I'm curious to see what he does, you know, in, in game time speed to see how 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 he sees progressed as far as, you know, as, as spring practice goes. I mean, he's, he's, I think he's the next guy. They call, they call him Brevin Jordan 2.0 over there, Bishop Gorman. I think he's the next guy. I think he's the next elite Miami tight end. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. There's no way you can keep that young man, you know, bottled up. He is going to explode, and we're going to be very happy he committed to the U as Canes fans. I can guarantee that. On the defensive side of the ball, I really want to see uh, Bobby Pruitt, Cam Bobby Pruitt, uh, when I when I when I when he committed, I look I looked up his highlights so, so I could do a, an episode on him. Very explosive first step to the quarterback. On um, blitz packages, he's going to be an absolute nightmare. But he's not just a a a thumper or hitter. He's also a very intelligent football player. If you hear the young man speak at, about the X's and O's of football, he's uh, he's very astute, a very good student of the game. The, the guys that that Mario likes, he likes football players, high football IQ, 
very disciplined and very competitive. So that's a, that's another guy I, I want to see as well. And that's from the class of 2024. From the previous yeah. class, I like to see Popo as well step up in year two. I've heard great things about him in practice. I've spoken to his dad. I've spoken to him before. Another young man with a high football IQ from the state of Georgia, born here, but from the state of Georgia. Absolutely an amazing young man. I also want, uh, want to see the development of Ray Ray Joseph as well. I want to see how he does, you know, in the spring game as well for the class of 2023. So, so th th those are like the guys I really, really want to focus on as well. And of course, Jojo Trader. All right. Uh, sure. Jojo He's Trader. On my list, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, he had Jeremiah Smith on the other side, which wasn't fair to him because he's a dynamic football player. If you look at the, if you look at the state championship game, if you look at him throughout his career as Shamanah Madonna, he's making NFL style catches. Even in practice, he's making big time catches. There's a beautiful still shot of him on social media, on Twitter, of him catching the ball with one hand, you know, out in Green Tree. I don't know who was covering him, but it was a beautiful catch. Another another guy that's going to be a guy as the future rolls around. So I think Canes fans are going to be very happy that he committed to the U. And he was like, I think he was a Kane through and through uh, yeah. before Kevin Beer got picked up as a as a wide receiver coach, DeMarcus Van Dyke was his lead recruiter and he was always leaning towards the cane. So that's a guy that really wanted to be a cane. I think from the very beginning, that's a hell of a list. Um, you, you touched on a <laughs> lot of the guys that I'm going to be looking for. Uh, I'm also like, like another thing that will, I'm going to be looking at it, especially even, you know, there is going to be some tackling in the spring game. They're not going to go out there and kill each other. Uh, but mm -hmm. anytime like, you know, contact contact is somewhat conservative or limited, uh, usually some of the positions you can judge the best are, are like the wide receivers and the defensive backs. The one-on-one -on -one battles can be pretty good. Uh, so I really want to see how some of the young DBs look in the spring game because their opportunity knocks for players like Damari Brown heading mm -hmm. into his second year, Robert Stafford heading into his second season. He didn't play much last year. Uh, Damari actually got some good playing time towards the end of the season, got his feet wet a little bit. But I think Stafford and Damari can have really bright futures if they can take that next step and develop properly. And I also like I, I want to see if, you know, the corners who to me have looked the best in spring, if they continue to shine out there. Daryl Porter Jr. is is the leader of that cornerback room. I don't worry about him whatsoever. Uh, Jadis Richard has been like the second guy who's really been stepping up. So can he can he keep going with that? And can he kind of fight off the young guys who are trying to take some of his playing time away? Uh, you know, at, at safety, some of the obvious experienced guys like Mish Powell, of course, I think will stand out. But Zaquan Patterson, man, I, I cannot wait yeah. because Zaquan. Oh, yeah. You know, he's he obviously he's he's learning the defense and he's adapting from high school to college. But Zaquan has provided some highlight moments out there. And, and in the points in practice, when contact has been allowed, Zaquan is usually popping somebody every single day. So uh, I think that young man is going to be is going to be part of a, a bright future here at Miami. And then, you know, we, we both we both kind of skirted around the obvious because we're, we're so deep in the weeds. We talk about this stuff every single day, but mm -hmm. definitely will. Uh, I, I want to see Cam Ward go out there as the starting quarterback for however long he plays or however long he has to play. Cause there are a lot of rep, a lot of quarterbacks. Miami wants to get reps to in that spring game, but uh, I want to see Cam look mistake free, look consistent out there, create some big plays, take care of the football, you know, one of those things the quarterback position didn't really do for Miami last year. Uh, and and I, I'd like to see, like, you think about it for, you know, not that there's going to be that many people there, as we know, but for those who are in attendance at Cobb Stadium and, and the hopefully millions watching uh, at home at ESPN Plus and ACC Network Extra, I want to see Cam hit a couple of deep shots in practice to get the crowd going. I want to see, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's Xavier Restrepo on the other end of some of those, Isaiah Horton, who's caught some good passes. Like, I, I would love to see Cam provide a couple of highlights because you know, Will, if Cam Ward hits a couple deep shots in the spring game, it's going to be all over social media, and a lot of those national pundits are going to be talking about it, and I love the attention he brings to Miami. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I, of course, I want to. Uh, I would like to also see Cam Ward right, as well. And I'm just, uh, you're right. I do want to see the DBs. DB is a position of which we do need some depth. So I do think we will be uh, looking for that in the transfer portal as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the spring game. I'm excited. I really am excited. I'm excited to see this offense, you know, flourish. I really do hope it's 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 a stretch, but I do hope this season with Cam Ward with the wide receivers that we have that we go 60 40 passing to running ratio. I do think that yeah. 
we need uh, that. I think going vertical would be a good thing. Yeah, no doubt. Well, uh, as we've been talking about this week with some of our guests, I know we hit on it a lot with the truth teller yesterday. I want to get Will's take on the expectations for Miami, the amount of pressure that's on Mario Cristobal this coming season. So you know what you want to do, my friends? You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. Folks, game time takes the hassle out of buying last-minute tickets. The deals actually get better on the Game Time app the closer you get to the event, and I've gotten so many steals. Miami Marlins games for under 10 bucks. Miami Heat games at prices you would not believe. Musical theater. We got Hamilton tickets recently. Uh, comedy show tickets. They have everything at Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, which means they're not going to tack on those hidden fees at the end to bait and switch you all in prices right away. Views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I love the priority last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. All-in pricing is important. Views from your seat, which is great, guys. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. I'm telling you, this is the only ticket service I use. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Folks, we will have a, a cool announcement coming up here on Locked on Canes before the episode is done today. So if you're a fan of Miami Hurricanes content, stay tuned for that announcement because I, I think it's good news for everybody who watches and listens to this show. Uh, always good news for the people who watch and listen to this network. Now, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We have Will from 305 Sports now with us. Uh, Will, uh, what, what's uh, what, what's your line in the sand for how many games you think Miami has to win this coming season? Okay, so first things foremost, I heard what Bruce said yesterday, and I love Bruce. He is the ultimate straight shooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't take that. Uh, you can't take that away from man. I mean, I love his optimism. I really do. On my end, I've just been disappointed as a Canes fan for so many years that it's kind of hard uh, to to be as overly optimistic. But I will say this. I will say this on paper, on paper right now, you line, you line them up today. I do believe that Miami should win 10 games. You know, you don't have North Carolina. You don't have North Carolina on paper today. And, I, and I'll explain what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Um, sure. You don't have North Carolina. You don't have Clemson, right? Either you have Florida state at home as well. Florida wasn't very good last year. Florida wasn't very good last year and you should be able to be, you know, you should be able to beat Duke. And of course, you know, the, 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 the usual suspects like ball state, USF and Florida M should be, easy victories now and my uh, on my show and i've had conversations with flo about this as well um when the when the transfer portal kicks back kicks back on monday there's going to be a lot of mixing and mixing and matching of rosters there's going to be some people that will be will be surprised on our end that depart and go to other schools and we may be surprised people from other end coming uh to different schools and some may even come here we're talking about david martinez possibly being a miami hurricane so that being said, that being said, I think I think I can get a better picture, a better picture as far as uh, as what uh, as far as predictions go, more or less towards maybe the, the May and so on and whatnot. But I still believe I still believe Mar Cristobal needs nine wins minimum. He needs nine wins minimum. It'll be a it'll be a two game improvement from last season. His his 2023 class, which is a very elite class, will. In 2020, uh, 2025 will be, you know, they'll be juniors. So they'll be a bit more developed. Right. They'll be much better, much bigger bodies, you know, much more seasoned and so on and whatnot. So nine is a minimum, but I think 10 wins is is doable. I do think that they can go and get 10 wins on paper. Uh, it's going to be difficult in the swamp, not an easy place to play. 
but I do think Miami could win that game. For me, uh, for me, my trap games are California because they'll be going to the West Coast. Even trip. though you're right, yeah, yeah, it's it's the jet lag. I mean, even though California, yeah. you know, you, you Cal sucks, you know, but they have a pretty talented running back. You know, but hey, but those are the games that, that sometimes get us. We all thought that oh, we're gonna wipe the floor with Georgia Tech, and, and look what happened last season. And, and, Virginia, and, and traveling yeah, that but, far out is not easy. Like I remember, you know, the the two thousand Miami team, which really should have won a national championship. Washington, they, they, mm-hmm. they lost. They lost. They lost to Washington. Yep. And Washington was an okay team, but Miami should have beaten them. But they had to go all the way out to Seattle. They lost that game. That's not an easy trip to go out west. No, it's not. And that's for me as a trap game. Another trap game, only because only because school historically, even in Miami's best years, has played as tough. Is Virginia Tech? Okay, Virginia Tech is a team that always plays Miami tough. I don't know how they're going to look like after after their spring game, you know, either. So w- we have to look at the rosters. But even then, they've always given Miami fits. Boston College almost defeated the 2001 greatest team, you know, ever assembled over there in, in Boston. So I do think n- a 10 wins is doable uh, based on, on paper what I'm looking at because I do think they could easily go f- first four games 4-0 and because I, I do think they could be Florida in the swamp, especially with Cam Ward at, at QB and the receivers. But I think nine win, it's a nine win minimum. Ten wins will be great, but I do think ten wins is is doable for the Canes. I do think based upon what I've seen the schedule and based upon the improvements we've made, you know, with the team through transfer portal and recruiting, I think ten is we did we did it. We're back. We're good. Now, if they get ten wins, Alex as well, Georgia, Alabama, they all better be shaking their boots because if Mario Cristobal can get a top oh. five class. Yeah. Going five and seven and seven and six. Can you imagine going ten and two or ten and three or eleven and two? Get ready. So this is this yeah, is it, this it, is a big gonna, season for the Kings. It's gonna yeah. If that happens, it's gonna go from like having to to plead with five stars to come here to having to turn five stars away. The way yep. and, and like Georgia has to do that sometimes because their yeah. roster is so loaded, you can't take everybody right. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it may, you're right. If Miami can win. 10 games, the recruiting is going to go from, you know, begging yeah. five stars to come here to, eh, I'm not so sure if uh, if we've got <laughs> enough spots for you, which would be fantastic. Will, thank you so much for taking the time, my friend. Awesome insight. Let people know where they can find your content at 305 Sports Now. I perfect. So you can subscribe to my channel, 305 Sports Now, on YouTube as well. You can follow me on X at William Padron at, at 305 Sports Now. You can also follow me on Facebook at 305 Sports Now as well. I love it. Will Padron does an awesome job. And, and guys, before before we wrap it up, I want to make a, a little show announcement here. Uh, big news, guys. We are teaming up here on Locked on Canes with Canes Connection, the official NIL collective of Miami Hurricanes Athletics. This is huge for us. What does this mean for you, the listener? You guys are going to get exclusive content with all your favorite Hurricanes athletes. We're going to have weekly, sometimes multiple weekly interviews with Miami Hurricanes players. So I'll keep it real with you. Everyone who's a part of this podcast, including you, the listener, you want to elevate the Miami Hurricanes back to prominence. And trust me, we're heading in the right direction. But the dawn of NIL has changed the landscape of college athletics to where NIL opportunities matter now more than ever. Strong NIL support doesn't guarantee championships, but a lack of NIL support guarantees you won't even be in the championship conversation. That's where Kane's connection comes into play. Kane's connection isn't just any collective. It's among the nation's elite. They're well-run, organized, and effective. And if you don't believe me, check out the recruiting rankings for football and basketball from last year. Look at the quality of transfers that have made their way to Coral Gables. You can visually see the difference that they are making and you can make with them. However, the NIL landscape is extremely competitive. By supporting Kane's connection, our Locked on Kane's community can make a direct impact on Hurricanes Athletics by making Canes Connection the premier collective in the country. It's not easy, and it will take each and every one of us stepping up and becoming a member. So please head over to canesconnection.com and check out their membership page. Choose your monthly plan. They range from $25 to $1,000 a month. Any support helps them. During checkout, make sure you use our new promo code LOCKED in the add promo code field and snag 20% off your first month with our promo code LOCKED. All of us now have the opportunity to put some skin into the game and make a real impact on the Hurricanes program. This is your chance to make a difference and commit to the cause. Again, sign up at canesconnection.com. Don't forget to use promo code LOCKED for 20% off your first month on any membership level. Thank you guys so much 
We'll talk to you again next time. And, and yeah, uh, usually going to be Fridays. We're going to have interviews with Kane's Connections athletes. So I cannot wait for that. So we will talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.